from the Richmond Journalism Teaching Studio on the University of Illinois campus. UI7 News, your U of I news source. Welcome back to UI7 News Break. I'm Alyssa Bohenick. And I'm Julie Homerding. In Santa Rosa, California, protesters march on behalf of a teen killed by police. 13-year-old Andy Lopez was fatally shot Friday. A Santa Rosa deputy and an officer in training shot Lopez seven times after mistaking his toy gun for an automatic rifle. Both officers have been placed on an administrative leave. The teen's death has brought outrage to the community. Some think the deputy and his partner showed poor judgment, or worse, deliberately targeted a Hispanic youth. Meanwhile, the Sheriff's Department says detectives are investigating death threats made against the deputies involved in the fatal shooting. Protesters march pleading that the officers responsible be charged with murder. Funeral services were held for Lopez Monday morning. One Champagne teen also lost friends to gun violence and protests on their behalf through music. Rachel Lloyd has the details. I always think like, what if it was me? Jamie experienced gun violence at a very young age, which motivated him to stay out of trouble. But it wasn't always easy. Like I said, I was getting into trouble, you know. Trouble kid, that's how a lot of people looked at me. His mentor, Virgil Hawkins, says the lack of a positive male role model made it especially hard for him to avoid mischief. Losing his father, you know, out of his life at an early age. He's not dead, but just not being there in, in a consistent fa fashion. Losing uncles to gun violence, losing friends to gun violence. So he chose basketball as a way to stay out of trouble. But once he left the court, he was faced with peer pressure. I played basketball, but outside of basketball, I used to be out with friends, you know, kicking it, what teams do. The Champagne shootings this summer hit too close to home for Jamie. Yeah, I know some of the people that was doing it. I know some of the people that got hit, you know, so. It's kind of crazy because I grew up with some of them. Jamie didn't want to get caught up in the gun violence epidemic, so he used his skills on the court and in the studio to lead a more positive path. I'm trying to bring positive back into music because I think that can actually help. Jamie transitioned from basketball to music. Now he can stay out of trouble and encourage peers to do the same. You ain't got to follow no trend. You can be your own person. You set your own trend. Be a leader, not a follower. Jamie's positivity is making a difference. I've seen him take young men who are known for selling drugs and gang banging and totally change their mindset. It isn't always easy, but Jamie is making a conscious effort to stay on the right path. I'm Rachel Lloyd for UI7 Newsbreak. Homecoming weekend got off to a rough start at Howard University. Admission to the ever popular Yard Fest got a little out of hand. The Yard Fest is a concert where famous Musicians and upcoming artists perform. The event is usually free, but this year students were charged $5. Hundreds of students rushed gates once they discovered the change. And prices increased once word got out that rapper 2 Chains would be performing. Nine people were reportedly injured, including two police officers working the event. All of the injuries are said to be minor. It's homecoming season for the Fighting Illini. Students and alumni have many ways to join in the fun. Bria Perdiman has the story. Happy homecoming! It's not uncommon to see a ton of orange and blue at the U of I, but this week it's an overdrive. It's Spirit Day and there are activities and food specials all over campus. Student Shannon Cecila hopes to attend as many homecoming events as she can. The last homecoming, I was not as involved as this homecoming, and so I want to be able to take away an experience that I can be like, oh, I can't wait for homecoming next year, you know, like, just get more involved this year. The student alumni ambassadors are hosting the entire week. Vice President Trisha Maxwell shares some perks of Spirit Day. It's like the middle of the week, it's to get kids excited, get them involved and really know that it's homecoming and just, you know, acknowledge that, you know, it is homecoming week and they need to be spirited and to show, you know, that game day spirit on a Wednesday. Get your homecoming gear, free sunglasses. <laughs> Those taking part in spirit day aren't leaving campus empty handed. With freebies like this, it won't be hard to show your Illini pride. Illinois Homecoming is the longest continuously running event at the university, dating back to 1910. Shannon, like many others, feel that Homecoming promotes unity across the campus. It brings everyone together and really like shows us true spirit, like Illini. We're Illini and we all want to be together. 
thousands are expected at the upcoming pep rally and football game. I'm Bria Perdeman for UI7 Newsbreak. Governor Quinn recently signed a bill into law that will raise the speed limit on interstates outside of metro regions from 65 to 70 miles per hour. Many students use Interstate 57 to get to and from the University of Illinois. The increase in speed brings mixed feelings to the students at the university. If anything, it'll just make cars less efficient because they're driving at a higher speed. And it's, I mean, it's not going to change the general population. It didn't do much. Over here I've seen like at 65 people already drive really safely so if you increase it to 75 you know you get there faster and you're still quite safe so it is a good thing. Okay, I don't think it's that big of a change from just 5 miles per hour. I think that people go even above 70 as it is so it's not really that big of a deal. Like the change or not, speed limits are set to take effect January 1st, 2014. The University of Illinois campus is going smoke-free come January 1st. In attempts to promote a healthier campus environment, the administration plans to eliminate secondhand smoke. Currently, this is the third leading cause of death in the United States. Being a smoker myself, I actually think it's a great idea. All right. Uh, for one, I think it may help myself and other people quit smoking. Making the campus smoke free is a really good idea, but I think it will be pretty difficult since a lot of people do smoke. And how they can, how are they going to control everyone smoking on campus? I don't know how they're going to do that. Further details about enforcement restrictions and intervention will be available this fall. New construction continues around campus this fall. Davenport Hall is experiencing exterior makeover. Construction includes a new roof and tuck pointing around the entire building. Recalking and patching up the impaired stones is also on the list of fixes. Construction will continue throughout the school year, ending in April 2014. A makeover is coming for Obamacare. For the Obamacare website, the quote-unquote Obamacare girl no longer appears on the homepage. Instead, visitors will see more information on health care options. The new and improved site highlights new ways to register for health insurance, like enrollment by telephone. In light of controversy surrounding the Health Care Act, administrators hope this will make things easier for everyone. The makeover is said to draw attention away from the website's problematic launch. The website will continue to post updates. All improvements for the site will, are projected to be finished by the end of this month. Our government isn't the only thing getting a makeover. Some New York dogs look totally different on Saturday. Pups got all dressed up for the 23rd annual Halloween Dog Parade at New York Topkins Square Park. Some dogs and owners wore matching costumes. Pups wowed crowds with their bright colors and elaborate costumes. Costumes ranged from barbecue grills to picnic tables to famous Hollywood characters. And some dogs became other animals. It was truly a treat for everyone, especially two people in particular. The crowd received one surprise at the end of this parade and it wasn't from the dogs. A couple came to the parade dressed up in light of the Halloween spirit. He popped the question and they left more, more than a puppy love. Congrats to the newly engaged couple. That's all we have for today. I'm Julie Homerding. And I'm Alyssa Bohanek. We'll be right back with more UA7 Newsbreak.